So now we've looked at an introduction to Karl Marx, what we're going to do here is look at his the people who influenced him within the field of philosophy and economics, okay? I think it must be said though first that it's basically impossible to go into uh, to go into uh, adequate detail on every single one of these people and how they influenced Karl Marx because these are just the main people that influenced Karl Marx there are countless countless others okay that we can find links and connections with okay but generally we can say that he was influenced by a number of sources and namely they were German idealist philosophy French socialism and British economics okay and from that we find different thinkers within these di different areas so German idealist philosophy we have Kant we have Hegel okay we have Feuerbach and then we have etc okay French socialism the main one I think we should talk about is Rousseau okay Rousseau really being almost the founder of socialism in some circles. And then British economics, he took a very uh, keen interest in the works of Adam Smith. Really the founder of modern economics. Okay, So with idealistic philosophy, with German idealist philosophy, we look at Kantian philosophy first. Okay, So Kantian philosophy uh, was on the basis of on which the structure of Marxism was said to be built, okay? We can really trace Kantian thinking throughout throughout Marxism, okay? And it's really seen as the blueprint, okay? So, so Marx makes a lot of references to, to teleology, okay? Teleology or teleology, which is the sort of the meaning that ends, okay, the end points within things, okay. So when he talks about his theory of history, he talks about the general teleology of society, okay. And this came not just from Kant, but it was developed by Kant, like it was built upon by Kant. It came really mainly from Aristotle and um, Plato in the ancient Greek. So we can really trace back Marxian thinking all the way back to there. But then we have Kantian philosophy really, uh, really adding to it, okay. When we look at uh, Hegel, Marx was influenced by, uh, in his theory of history by Hegel, and his Hegel's theory of dialectics, okay, oh, I've written that down here, here is theory of dialectics, because Hegel claimed that reality and history should be viewed dialectically, okay, we'll look at dialectics again, this is another complicated area. Feuerbach also was an important influence on Karl Marx, who was also a German idealist. He proposed a number of theories, mainly looking at uh, things in theology. He was very much a, a theologian, almost, you could say, or, you know, a philosophical theologian when it comes to views on religion. And he really, there were some disagreements with him and uh, with him and Marx on the sort of nature of religion and all these kind of things. Moving on to British uh, political economy okay so i think it should be noted that the word the phrase political economy is going to be used quite a lot in this series because it was used quite a lot in marx's writings okay so political economy looks at the study of politics and the study of economics basically however some argue that the phrase political economy was used back then in the same way that modern economics is used now as a phrase okay so we could just really describe political economy as modern economics okay marx was very critical of popular economists so especially the british uh, political economists specifically the work of Adam Smith. Adam Smith did a lot of work when it comes to relationships between property and labour, and 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 looking at uh, and looking at the nature of labour. Okay, and Marx did criticise Smith. That should be a capital S. I'm very sorry. Did criticise Smith for only really theorising within the realm of capitalist economics. Okay, so Adam Smith really was the blueprint of his economics was was really capitalism. And Marx was thinking more that that you shouldn't really base it on capitalism since that's not the innate natural property of human society. The default economics would probably not be capitalism. That's what he was arguing. And that's what really he argued in most of his life in the Communist Manifesto and so on. So really we have, uh, we really have a little bit of a, a disparity in the critique 
of Adam Smith's uh, British uh, political economics with with Marx there. Got a picture of Hegel here. That's what that's who what Hegel looked like. So French socialism was also a very important, um, very important influence, a sort of bedrock of Marx's Marx's development. Okay. So specifically Jacques Jean Rousseau who was very critical, actually, of private property, the idea of private property. And if we look at other thinkers that around the time that were looking at political philosophy, we have people like Thomas Hobbes and John Locke, okay? These people were, they were very, they were very pro-private property, okay? John Locke wrote quite a lot about private property, okay? Very, very uh, dreary as well, unfortunately, if, don't, don't bother reading it, but, <laughs> so John Locke wrote quite a lot about private property, so did Hobbes, but they weren't as critical, or even critical at all, about private property as Rousseau, and so for this reason, People suggest that Rousseau really laid the groundwork for for uh, for criticizing private property, and thus, really, from that brought about the rise of modern socialism and therefore communism, because communism is essentially the abolition of private property. Okay, that's what Marx said anyway. His his he reduced communism down to an abolition of private property. So. It has to be said that Rousseau must have influenced Marx even a little bit in his writings. But it's also clear that uh, Rousseau was really ever mentioned in his writings. Okay, uh, just But that doesn't mean that he wasn't influenced just because he didn't mention him very much. Okay, So we, can de- we can't deny really that, that Marx's critique of private property can be derived from some works by Rousseau. Whether or not they both just came to the same conclusions is up for debate, but it's highly likely that a very well-read man like Karl Marx probably read Rousseau and was influenced slightly by his his ideas. So we can really see the sort of the cauldron of of, of different ideas that we're going to have to look at and look through. Well, that's, a, that's an image of uh, that's Kant there. Okay, so we've got. A lot that we need to unpack and really go into okay so German idealist philosophy French socialism British economics uh, Kant Smith Rousseau Hegel Feuerbach these are all people that 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 Marx drew upon to really uh, to really to really develop his theories and even you can really you know draw a tree of these of these things because these people really got can got a lot of his influences from Aristotle okay and and therefore Plato so we can really go all the way back uh, to just ancient Greek philosophy to say where Marx got his ideas from because they were all built from these great thinkers back in ancient Greek uh, so generally when it comes to uh, Marxist thinking we ha- we can't look at it in a vacuum we have to look at it through the lens of the 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 state at the time and the mixing of these three uh, different uh, sectors together okay